be fine. All right. I think we've gone far enough. Can someone explain to me what the hell that thing was? I've seen a lot of wicked creatures in my life, but this... This is not something people see and manage to tell stories about. It must have injured me, or the serpent, as it was once known. But Jimmy is just a children's tale. Feasting on flesh, enslaving souls. How can it be true? So that is a fantastic question. Shmi, just like many other creatures, are part of the Monsterious Companion of Gord. Freshly released a game and my name is Saiken and I'll be here to review and answer the question, is Gord worth your time and money? Gord falls uh, nicely into the genre of a real-time strategy game with simulation and tactical elements alike kind of goes back to the original base building games with a severe campaign where you are taking on the role of the chosen of a king to lead an army or rather pave the way for a soft landing of said army into the north. Unfortunately for you, the north is roaming by horrifying creatures that will make that journey a torturous experience a gritty and horrorous game where you need to go up against monsters demons devils hex and whatever else can lurk in the wild woods you do have a couple of settlers that can go into different roles but i will i'm already going ahead of myself the question really is is that game any good so let me take the typical means of reviewing the game and answer that uh, question mostly before we are joining the game review i want to pinpoint that any form of review that i'm doing is more of an old style fashion review in a sense that i'm not giving every single game a 9 or 10 out of 10 points but games in my perspective are falling under a normal distribution whereas five is average and a very uh, good game already ranges in a six to seven an exceptional game would be an eight a one-in-a-kind uh, game that is absolutely worth your money as a nine and a genre defining game is a ten so a true unique game so where does a gourd rank on that scale great question imaginary strawman let's go into it so let's talk about the lore of uh, the game uh, one of the elements uh, that is very important in an rpg like uh, scenario as gore is presenting itself there is an exceptionally deep guide inside of uh, the game however it's not really uh, well accessible plus uh, although the guide kind of covers the core ideas of the game i.e why is there an eternal darkness in the north? What is the chronicle of, uh, of everything that is happening? Who's the king's adversary? So that would be Advan, the quite annoying uh, dwarfling. Or who's the king himself? It really feels throughout the game as all of that is a little bit shallow, I must say. They never really go in depth. Um, Isidore doesn't have a face. There is a bit of a talk around Isidore's son that is fighting in the south. Why has that war even erupted? How is the landscape determined? Just generally, how does the world look like? It feels from a lore perspective that the whole scenario has been uh, done pretty much on an afternoon in one lore writer's head. And that's really the depth of the background story here. Uh, you are seeing a few characters. Uh, some of them are moderately fleshed out. For instance, Lynx, when we met her, does have, have a distinct character. And Advent, for what it's worth, has a distinct character as well. But really, when you dive a little bit deeper into the world, there is a huge missed opportunity within uh, Gord as the game itself lends, it, uh, lends itself to a scenario where you could put a bit more... Uh, God's morale, building of the land, why are things happening, a bit more background story. All of that requires a bit more pacing though 
And I don't know whether it is deliberate game des uh, design for Generation X, and I don't want to uh, speculate here, but the whole intro, which is a three minute long uh, intro to the game, really covers the lore only fractional. Why wouldn't you just use that opportunity to actually slower pace it a bit more, do a couple of cutscenes that are relevant, and introduce the player into what is happening before making them a nameless grunt of King Isidore that needs to conquer the North. It really feels very gamey in a sense, and you never truly get the connection towards what is at stake. The king at some point in the preview tells you that if you're, um, if you're failing him, this will be kind of the worst thing that ever happens to you. But even that threat is somewhat ho hollow and meaningless if you aren't really connected to it. Other games are doing that much better. If you look at the Baldur's Gate series, if you look at RPGs like Divinity Original Sins, they are typically just having a bit of a tutorial to start creating a, a storytelling arc, to start creating momentum of why what is happening is relevant to you, and then bit by bit introducing you into it. I'm not saying that Gord is not doing it whatsoever. For instance, when Lynx appeared, uh, there was a bit of an introduction into the magic uh, universe of Gord. But other than that, there is really not that much. Where are the monsters coming from? Why are they there? Why is it mysterious? Everybody's just shrugging it off and is like, eh, yeah, well, it happens. The North is a tough place. And that's really about it. So I will give it 5 out of 10. And there is definitely room for improvement. And I'm being generous on this score because I appreciate kind of the artwork and a lot of the written background. But the way that it's presented for the player is not accessible at all. Let's come to the next uh, section, which is the graphic and the GUI. I would say the game itself has a solid framework for graphics. You can see, for instance, if you're building up a city, you can um, make it in any shape or form as you like. The interface itself is somewhat intuitive when you're going through it. However, um, there are a couple of improvement potentials. Whilst each of uh, the characters individually is decently designed, it uh, does have a polygonic shading. Uh, the start. textures uh, themselves aren't bad either. The overall uh, shading of uh, the shadows, for instance, combat animation, as well as the overall detail of the textures this year is already the highest resolution, ultra high, isn't fully on par with other games uh, that are currently released. You can clearly see that even the interludes, when there are cinematics, are very much on the level of a Witcher 3 game uh, graphic. They are, they are heavily relying on rain effects and the skin of uh, the characters continuously looks wet and damp, although it isn't necessarily raining outside. So it seems that they were falling in love with a couple of effects such as uh, the shading of uh, fog and fog-like effects as well as the wet effects and they were just continuously perpetrating it throughout the entire uh, entire game. The graphic however isn't my biggest concern. If it was just for graphics the game would potentially uh, get a solid 6 or maybe even 6.5 out of 10. Is, uh, it, there is uh, sufficient kind of uh, love in detail. The buildings are looking fine and um, also in the actual buildings you don't see a lot of repetition so I must commence them for just the core uh, graphical elements. However, the graphical user interface is a catastrophe in my perspective. It took me a while to just learn the absolute basics. There are sub-menus -men upon sub-menus upon sub-menus. You can for instance uh, see here under the building, there are building trees. And there is little to no explanation, although I've gone through the help segment quite a bit. How do you upgrade buildings? Unclear, doesn't really talk about it. Which buildings are needed and why are they needed? Not 100% clear as well. The tooltips sometimes uh, have spelling mistakes in them and are not really helpful either. So I would say 
in terms of just a modern triple a game and that is kind of uh, the bar that this game wants to um yeah compete itself against it is subpar on the gui level hence an overall rating of 5 out of 10 kind of pretty much in the middle if they would work on the gui and just make it much more user friendly i suppose that that rating could go up let's talk about the sound and the effects in the game Do remember me, be blessed. i will give you a bit of a sample in the beginning the skies were vast, good, brimming with power. Ne'er shall human minds be of the capacity to comprehend the peace and wisdom that did fill the skies so. This is a good example of some of the snippets within the game that have been done very, very well. The narrator, the overall interaction, whenever something is voiced, generally Gord does a very good uh, job in portraying that the voices are fitting yes it is not a darkest dungeon narrator but you cannot have a genre defining sound and fx guy working on every single project additionally the actual sounds within the game sound crisp so just listen to some of uh, the uh, sounds when a uh, villager is dragging some logs behind him yep or working on them or hitting a tree generally speaking the sound works however there is still room for improvement in the game if you are looking at the opportunity of just voicing a few more lines enabling the townsfolk with a bit more banter in between really giving them a deeper character and not limiting the interaction to a couple of static um, cinematic scenes in between each of the episodes. The game would have uh, held much better up, up on the kind of replayability and atmosphere that you could get out of it. Additionally, whilst the FX and the pure sound is great, I would say Gord is rather light on the ambient and music. Yes, you do have a little bit of music here and there, and yes, it's sort of not disrupting the gameplay, but the game hasn't certainly uh, reached the pinnacle of musical atmosphere. If you compare it with really well-designed games like the Final Fantasy genre, where you are having games that are on spot with the music, where even the beat sometimes is very much synchronized to the movements uh, that you're seeing inside of the game. If you're uh, comparing it to titles like for instance, Jagged Alliance or XCOM that are really crisp in their soundtrack, memorable just from listening to the music, then Gord is nowhere near that. So I would say on the sound, uh, on the music side, it's potentially more on a 4 out of 10, whilst the FX side and the actual narration voice is more on a 7 out of 10. Overall, I came to the conclusion that this game is probably in the range of 6 out of 10 in the spectrum. Which now brings us to the tactical gameplay. And I cannot stress uh, that point enough. On and off, on and off. The tactical gameplay could be a bit improved in the actual game. So, tactic, as far as this game is concerned, really looks at rebuilding your settlement every single time. And whilst it's fun in a classical real-time strategy game like Warcraft 3, there is a reason why the genre has ebbed down over time and has been more and more replaced uh, with uh, games that are automatically doing the resource collection for you. And to be fair, uh, Gord is trying to kind of be a little bit more retro in that aspect where resources are sparse, you need to manage uh, them well. And the unique feature here is that you can't really produce units in a classical sense. 
uh, units are being born, then take some time to mature, and they also take a lot of experience to actually level up. So there is a bit of a permadeath e effect happening. So I would say that is good, and I am glad that they included it. However, it seems like a little bit too broad spectrum and too much mingled into one game. It tries to decide whether or not it wants to be an RTS game or really a tactical battle game and it's sort of becoming a jack of all trades master of none uh, type of uh, game. You are building up your settlement but there is not really a lot of depth in it to, uh, to look into it. You do have two main resources which is basically lumber and um, reed and you basically need to gather those then there are a couple of buildings that do food in some shape or form then there are a couple of buildings that do mil uh, military but yet that all costs gold and there's really no perfect way of getting gold reliably at least not in the first few missions and then there are additional uh, buildings that basically just compensate for a mechanic that feel that makes you feel really bad so in a sense if you're losing health you need the balia if you use sanity you need the madri and so on and so forth so uh, these buildings just exist because uh, the environment sucks and is hostile to you so it that never feels like an achievement of building any of that at the end of the day there isn't any specialization compared to warcraft 3 which is an all-time classic and a genre defining game where you really at uh, the um, peak of uh, the uh, campaign were able to just focus on a couple of units and uh, build an army around that. Do you want to go Torrent Chief plus Headhunters or do you, for instance, want to go Blade Masters, Grunts and a couple of Witch Doctors in the backline? And different strategies could actually lead to a very prosperous outcome. Hence, increasing kind of the replayability and also making it more meaningful for you. Court, on the other hand, takes a very different feature. If you just look at it, uh, there are already uh, seven buildings that are just focusing on resource gathering. Then there are two additional buildings that are just focusing on making you suck less. And then the actual preparation for combat is very sparse. You have frontline units and you have archers and that's pretty much it. A little bit of magic on top of it. So that's the entire tree where I would say if you are enjoying gathering resources and that's kind of uh, what you like to do, then this game will definitely fulfill your expectations. For someone who is uh, going into a real-time strategy game like any other uh, game like Warcraft or Starcraft as an example, even Command and Conquer, the resource gathering aspect was boiled down to at best two different resources and that was it. You already were um, upset when your drones got ambushed by the scenario, but in this particular case it's even more difficult to protect your workers because they will continue to roam on and on and on. The way that the game works is that you do have an auto gathering mechanic. So take any of these buildings, um, for instance, the reed building, you will see that they are currently auto gathering right here. And once they have finished auto gathering, then they will look at the next uh, reed. And unless you are micromanaging and then specifically telling them start to go here and here and here and will always take notifications about how your current resources have been extinguished. The other alternative is simply to let them automatically harvest and the problem with automatic harvest is they will continue to move on and on and on and therefore at some point pull enemies. It has happened to me and it is a very frustrating experience because you need to babysit all of them. The point that I'm trying to make is if you look at the tactical gameplay, which could have been just fantastic, a lot of exploration uh, into the wilderness, I think no one would have, um, uh, would have had a problem or would have uh, found it a bad design if the read here would have just uh, lasted for half an hour and then a couple of guys go back and forth, back and forth and are just harvesting the read. Instead, the game decides to make the whole harvesting aspect and resource gathering aspect a core part of its feature. And I simply think it is not a lot of fun the way it has been implemented. 
I don't like micromanaging games per se, and I can hardly imagine that most of the players will find great enjoyment in that either. Which neatly brings us to the replayability of Gord. Gord is a game that focuses on a campaign, on a storyline, and it has the option to also then create uh, manual scenarios where you can battle it out in a multiplayer environment. Okay, I get it, very similar to other real-time strategy games, but the question is really how good is a real-time strategy game? And I will just use an example of Warcraft 3 again because it has been an all-time classic. I think I've played the campaign of Warcraft 3 at least three or four times on different difficulty levels with different uh, strategies and different outcomes. Uh, each of the uh, scenes, each of the development, the storyline itself, just wanted me to just come back and revisit it. And part of the replayability in a good real-time strategy game is to make the core concept of the game fun. Gord goes above and beyond to make that not happen for the average player that does not want to look for a specific experience of a very gritty environment and it is uh, saddening to see because the game has so much potential in a positive way the whole arc of building your city starting with the same buildings over and over go through the routine of uh, gathering uh, basically uh, requiring you to spend half an hour maybe even an hour to just set up the entire city to take it to the highest level and then send out a well specialized troop of scouts to explore the map and look for secrets that somehow does not really sit right uh, with me once the maps are explored and once you have gone through it Yes, there might be a little bit of uh, replayability value uh, as some of the decisions that you make uh, can just alter quest outcomes, but there aren't many side quests in the scenarios to begin with. And to be honest, the core weakness of the game is not the scenarios themselves. The core weakness of the game is that the actual uh, fundamental idea of having a resource gathering community that you need to build up um, is a bit problematic. The game does not answer the fundamental question why would you build up a town, make it defensible, just build it up to a certain level just to abandon it uh, for the next uh, town that you are building up just around the corner. So these gourds that are being built up are literally sitting about two stone throws from one another as the campaign map progresses and you as the player need to go through that whole building process over and over i think it wouldn't have been a bad idea to just let the player start with a fully equipped gourd and then just like uh, in command and conquer on starcraft when you come to the later missions you're not always required to go through the grind again Gord, however, has a very different approach. Like I said, it is micromanagey and the core game loop of building up your Gord does not necessarily um, instill a lot of um, fun and courage whilst you're doing it. It more feels like a chore that you need to go through before you can go to the really fun part of the game. So where does that lead us all together? Well, when you look at uh, Gord, you do have a, a very uncut gem. Unfortunately, it is so early in the cutting stage that at this point, I do have mixed feelings about the game. Whilst it comes with a lot of lore uh, that is there in written form, the lore itself feels a bit bland and never gets a bit deeper so that it feels relatable. The graphic is fine, but not extraordinarily good and some of the little glitches, a bit of the animations and in particular the graphical user interface appears to be very clunky. The sound is on point, the sound effects are good, however the music isn't really fully there. What you're currently hearing is potentially a good example of a very rare treat in the game most of it unfortunately doesn't follow up with the same quality of music. The tactical gameplay is one of its weaknesses. The game itself offers you a 
core play mechanic that isn't particularly fun for the player and the fights themselves could have definitely benefited from a little bit more oversight and depth in the actual um, ability design compartment. There is room for much more than just casting spells essentially out of the base, but instead letting your heroes have a couple of discernible abilities. The replayability of the game is potentially its biggest problem at the moment, and I will highlight that it is not so much replaying a campaign after you've done it for the very first time, but the core problem of this game is that the game loop of needing to build up your gourd and specifically the micromanagement around the resources isn't great to begin with. In total, I would give gourd a mixed score of slightly below average. It uh, definitely does have its high points. I would say it has potential to do much more than that, but I sincerely hope uh, that the designers of the game are thinking about uh, the community feedback and generally the feedback from those who have tested the game and work hard on improving it. The game itself could be much, much more than it currently is. I hope you enjoyed the review. Do you agree with uh, what I've been saying? Do you have different opinions? Are you going to test out uh, Gord? Let me know in the comment section down below. Take care and have a good one.